five seconds. The main purpose of the United Nations is to build up a world without war, a world based on the cooperation of nations and peoples. It is not merely a world where war is kept in check by a balancing of armed forces. It is much deeper than that. It is a world from which the major causes of war have been removed and social structures built up which further peaceful cooperation within a nation as well as between nations. In the preamble of the constitution of the UNESCO, it is stated that war begins in the minds of men. That is essentially true and ultimately it is necessary to bring about the change in our minds and to remove fears and apprehensions, hatreds and suspicions. Disarmament is a part of this process for it will create an atmosphere of cooperation. But it is only a step towards our objective and a part of the larger efforts to read the world of war and the causes of war. In the present context, however, disarmament assumes a very special importance for us, overriding all other issues. For many years past, there have been talks on disarmament and some progress has undoubtedly been made in so far as the plans and proposals are concerned. Still, we find that the race of armaments continues as also the efforts to invent even more powerful engines of destruction. If even a small part of these efforts was directed to the search for peace, probably the problem of disarmament would have been solved by this time. Apart from the moral imperative of peace, every practical consideration leads us to that conclusion. For as everyone knows, the choice today in this a nuclear age is one of utter annihilation and destruction of civilization or of some way to have peaceful coexistence between nations. There is no middle way. If war is an abomination and an ultimate crime which has to be avoided, we must fashion our minds and policies accordingly. There may be risks, but the greatest risk is to allow the present dangerous drift to continue. In order to achieve peace, we have to develop a climate of peace and tolerance and to avoid speech and action which tend to increase fear and hatred and at the present it may not be possible to reach 
full disarmament in one step though every step would be conditions to that end we live in an age of great revolutionary changes brought about by the advance of science and technology therein lies the hope for the world and also the danger of sudden death because of these advances the time we have for controlling the forces of destruction is strictly limited if within the next 3 or 4 years effective disarmament is not agreed to and implemented then all the goodwill in the world will not be able to stop the drift to certain disaster in the context of things as they are today the great nations the united states of america and the soviet russia hold the key to war and peace there's is a great responsibility but every country big or small is concerned in this matter of peace and war and therefore every country must shoulder its responsibility and work to this end in order to deal with these big issues effectively we have to take big and impersonal views it is only the united nations as a whole that can ultimately solve these problems therefore while all efforts towards disarmament must be welcomed the united nations should be closely associated with such efforts the question of disarmament has been considered at various levels there is the question of general disarmament and of the ending of test explosions of nuclear and their nuclear weapons so far as the test explosions are concerned considerable progress has been made in the discussions of the committee which has been meeting in geneva indeed it would appear that an agreement has been reached on many basic issues and only a little more effort is needed to complete this agreement i suggest that a final agreement on this subject should be reached as early as possible this is not strictly speaking disarmament but undoubtedly any such agreement will bring a large measure of relief to the world disarmament must include the prohibition of the manufacture storage and use of weapon of mass destruction as well as the progressive limitation of conventional weapons it is admitted that disarmament should take place in such stages as to maintain broadly the balance of armed power it is only on this basis that success can be achieved and this pervading sense of fear countered it must also be clearly understood that this armament and a machinery for control must go together 
and neither of these can be taken up singly and now a proposal has been made that the question of disarmament should be referred to a committee of experts in fact experts have been considering this matter during the past years and we have had the advantage of their views stop